now as well. Let me just bring that screen back a little bit more so it's more focused on the questions now. So guys, thanks for joining. So today I'm going to show you how to actually, you know, uh, get these questions all correct on the theory test. I know a lot of people really struggle, uh, but what we're going to, I'm going to show you how to uh, break that question down, pick out the key words in that question and how to also break down the answers as well. Okay, so I'm going to show you a really easy way to get a really, really high score and hopefully pass your theory test first time. We want to be aiming for 50 out of 50, okay? The app I'm using is the four in one uh, theory test app made by Driving Test Success. These people just appear. Um, you can get it on the Play Store, App Store. The link is in um, in the in my bio, and also I'll I'll drop the link on uh, on the YouTube description as well, so you can you, you know where you can get it from. We're going to go for this theory test here. So if I just click on that, and then uh, we're not going to do the full fifty questions. We're going to do a breakdown of twenty questions, quality over quantity. Okay, so we're going to have a look at the practice revision questions. We're going to do all the categories except the videos. I'm just going to get rid of the videos. So we're going to do alertness, attitude, documents, hazard awareness, road and traffic signs, incidents, emergencies, other types of vehicles, vehicle handling, motorway rules, rules of road, safety margin, everything you can see on here, basically. Vulnerable road users, vehicle loading, and so on. Okay, so if I click start, and then I'm going to click for 20 questions. We're going to stick with that. That's fine. Questions we've not seen yet. So hopefully that's going to be different to what's on my channel anyway with the other videos. And then I'll click start practice and that would actually get us going. Okay, so question number one, guys, <coughs> is uh, what does it mean if the electronic stability control or the ESC indicated light comes on briefly while you're driving? Uh, does it mean your uh, ESC system is running a routine test, ESC system has a fault, ESC system is switched off, or the ESC system has activated? Any idea what it means? It comes on briefly while you're driving. What does it mean? Right, so you guys are going to choose A, B, C, or D. What do you reckon it is right now? I can see a lot of a lot of you guys actually over on TikTok are actually saying D. Um, over on over on uh, YouTube, guys, make some uh, comments on there as well. Uh, right, so a lot of you are saying D. The um, the ESC system has activated if it comes on briefly while you're driving. Okay, a lot of you are saying D. Okay, right. Let's look at the hint. That could be, a, uh, you know, a difficult one. SC is a computer controlled technology that detects uh, reduced traction and automatically makes corrective adjustments to prevent loss of control. The ESC light comes on briefly to alert the driver that the system has activated and the car is approaching its handling limits. It's a powerful driver aid, but it cannot save a car once its traction limits have ex exceeded. So basically that's telling us, yeah, D is the correct answer, it has been activated. So if it comes on briefly while you're driving, your wheels have lost traction, so your electronic stability control has just kicked in slightly for a split second, get you control of the car, and as soon as it thinks, wow, well, we've got control again, it switches back off again. So yeah, you're absolutely right. D is the correct answer. Well done, guys. Uh, so let's click on to the next question. Question number two. Traffic operas, officers operate on motorways and some primary routes in England and Wales. What are they authorised to do? Remember, these are not police. They're actually traffic officers, okay? So if you look in the picture, it says traffic officer rather than police. What are they authorised to do? Is it stop and direct anyone on a motorway, issue fixed penalty notices, repair broken down vehicles on the motorway, or stop and arrest drivers who break the law? A, B, C, or D, guy. Hazmat saying A, Sudika saying A, Amir is saying A. Um, what else have we got? Gula saying A, Wolf is saying A, Umi is saying A as well. Um, yeah, pretty much all of you saying A, guys. So that's actually, yeah, I, I would make sense. I, I, would, I would agree with that as well. Okay. Um, so, only police office, officers can issue penalty notices um, and they can uh, police officers can stop and arrest drivers who break the law. Traffic officers cannot, okay? Let's look at C. Repair broken down vehicles on a motor. No, they're not. They're not, you know, breakdown service. So that is the correct, incorrect answer as well. So if we process like that way, get rid of the, you know, the answers that we know are silly, should leave us with the answer that kind of makes sense, Yeah. Traffic officers can stop and direct anyone on a motorway. All right. Yep. Most of you said A anyway. Happy with that. Let's click on to question three. You're on a road that's only wide enough for one vehicle. What should you do if a car is coming towards you? Should you pull into a passing place if your vehicle is wider? Pull into a passing place on your right? Pull into a passing place on your left? 
or force the other driver to reverse? A, B, C, or D on this one, guys. What do you reckon it's going to be? A, B, C, or D? Umi's saying C. Aileen is saying A. Uh, Daniela says, pull into a passive place on your left. So that you're saying C. Uh, Guled is saying C. Nayas is saying C. Uh, Kantara is saying A. Pull into a passive place if your vehicle is wider. Um, uh, it, it, situation will change on this one, guys, won't it? Uh, Matt is saying C as well. Wolf is saying C. Hammer is saying C. Sweet, but everything is saying C. Wolf is saying C again. Hennock is saying C. Yeah, it really depends on the situation. It doesn't really give us a lot of m information. It doesn't tell us how wide is the road. Um, you know, where's which side of the road the car's parked on. It doesn't give us all of those scenarios to sort of like warrant thinking, pull into a passing place if your vehicle is wider. What if your vehicle isn't wider? Then what? Then what do we do? Okay, so what should you do if, if a non coming car is coming towards you? It's only wide enough for one vehicle. If you've got space, yeah, pull into a passing place on your left hand side. Yeah, because we're driving the left hand side in this country, we pull into the left hand side, let the oncoming car pass if there's space and so on. Yeah, most of you said C anyway, it's the most common answer. So excellent, let's go with C uh, and let's click next. I'm also just choosing your most um, common answers. If it's wrong, I'm still going to choose it, and then we'll look at it later on why it was wrong, okay? So we're going to do it that way. So I'm going with your correct answers, well, your 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 chosen answers, and we'll take it from there. Okay, question four. <clears throat> You're on a three-lane motorway. How should you overtake a slow-moving lorry in the middle lane if it's showing this sign? So first of all, think, what is this sign? What does it tell you? What does it tell you? Cautiously approach the lorry, then overtake on either side. Follow the lorry until you can leave the motorway. Use the right-hand lane and overtake the lorry normally. Or approach with care and overtake on the left of the lorry. Now, I can see on the screen a lot of you saying D, actually. It's the most common answer. I think every single one of you said D, actually. Yeah, it's telling you to keep left, isn't it? Yeah. So we know the lorry is slow moving and it's in the middle lane. And it's telling you here, move left, keep left, keep left of me. Yeah. So, yeah, D is the correct answer. Approach with care and overtake on the left of the lorry. Um, all the other answers kind of would be dangerous. Overtake on either side? No, that's not what that's telling us. It's probably because there's roadworks up ahead on the right hand side. Uh, follow the lorry until you can leave the motorway? That's not what that's telling us either. Okay, so yeah, D is the correct answer. Approach with care and overtake the lorry on the left. Question number five, guys. You're in a built up area at night and the road is well lit. Why should you use dipped headlights? dipped headlights okay so remember you're in a built-up area and it's night so we know it's dark you're going to use your headlights okay the road is well lit street lights are good so that's nice why should you use dipped headlights okay not full beam or main beam we're using dipped headlights is it so that you can go much <laughs> you can go at a much faster speed so that you can switch to main beam quickly so that you can be easily seen by others or so that you can see further along the road a b c or d now i can see a lot of you saying c actually a lot of you can see, so you can see easily be seen by others. Yeah, so let's look at our scenario. We know we're not, it's night, it's a built up area, the road is well lit. Why should you use your headlights, your dipped headlights? Well, obviously, so you can actually be uh, seen and you can see as well. Yeah, so a lot of you saying C, uh, Gullard is an easy C, <laughs> Katara is saying C, uh, Usa, is it Usa? It's saying C as well. Yeah, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go in with C as well. Let's go for C on this one. Let's click next. Question number six. When should you leave a two second gap between your vehicle and the one in front? When it's foggy, when it's dry, when it's icy, or when it's raining? A, B, C, or D on this one, guys. This one's actually really easy. This is simple. Let me see what you're all saying. Hi, Daisy. Matt is saying C, when it's icy. Oh, I'm afraid not, buddy. A lot of you saying B. A lot of you saying be a two second rule or two second gap, yeah. Um, so yeah, when it's dry. Okay, now let's look at the other answers. When it's foggy, so how many seconds should you keep? You know, leave between you and the vehicle in front of you when it's foggy. So if dry is going to be two seconds, what about when it's foggy? Remember, you can't see ahead of you. Yeah, somebody saying maybe ten seconds. Yeah, potentially. What about when it's raining? So you've got wet roads, which means you've got less grip on the ground. 
So how many seconds should you keep between you and the vehicle in front of you if it's raining? This is obviously speed dependent as well. OK, so a lot of you saying now four seconds, Claire is saying six seconds. Yeah, four would be appropriate, actually. Four would be appropriate. OK, what about when it's icy, icy or snowy? Now, obviously, you're going to have way less grip, aren't you? Yeah, in icy or snowy conditions. So, yeah, uh, Samaya, uh, Guled, Nisha, Sadukt, you're all saying 10 seconds. Yep, good. That's 10 seconds is definitely the good option. Claire is saying six. Six might not be enough there, Claire. You've got very icy conditions, so, you know, uh, you need all that grip. Um, Zach is saying triple the length. Um, well, we're going to go for 10 seconds, roughly thereabouts. So enough so that you can actually, you know, break in time, break early, break gently. OK, but the answer for this one, yeah, B, a lot of you said B on this one as well. So when it's dry, you should keep a two second gap between you and the vehicle in front of you. Well then, guys, well done. OK, question seven is when should you update your vehicle registration certificate? Is it when you need, uh, sorry, when your vehicle needs an MOT, when you have a collision, when you move house or when you pass your driving test? A, B, C or D. When should you update your vehicle registration certificate? Or some people call it a logbook. Data is saying A, when you need a vehicle and needs the MOT. Most of you are saying C. I'm getting lots of mixed answers on this one coming through. Has, has, is it Hassan or Hanan said D? Well, when you pass a driving test? No, it's about your vehicle. So when you buy a car, you get something that's called a logbook, okay? Um, it's that that needs to be changed when you do something, okay? It's, well, a lot of you are saying C anyway, when you move house. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to be register your old address, won't it? So it needs to be updated. Like your driving license, when you move address, you're going to have to change your driving license. Tell them that you've moved house. Same with your car details. Same with your insurance details. Same with everything. Really. You know, you have to notify your bank. You've got to tell everybody. Yeah, you've got to notify everybody that, you know, if you've, you've moved house. So you start getting letters to the new address and so on. Yeah. So, yeah, C is the correct answer when you move house on this one. Question number eight, guys. So you're driving towards a zebra crossing. What should you do if the person in a wheelchair is waiting to cross? What should you do if a, if a person in a wheelchair is waiting to cross? Be prepared to stop. Wave the person to wait. Wave to the person to cross or continue on your way. A, B, C or D. Let's think what is the rules for that zebra crossing? What should you do? As you approached it, uh, you're driving towards it and there's somebody waiting to cross. What's the rules uh, of the UK road? What should we do? Should we stop? I think a lot of you are saying A anyway. Claire is saying C. Wave to the person to cross. Most of you said A. And it would be the correct answer. A is the correct answer. Be prepared to stop. Now, anybody that says um, B or C, you're going to wave to the person to wait across. That could be very dangerous. Ideally, what you don't want to do is wave people to cross the road or something. Okay. Um, why is that dangerous? Well, they might not look the other way. They might not see a car coming the opposite way or a bike or a cyclist or a motorbiker. And that vehicle might not have spotted that wheelchair user waiting to cross. If that wheelchair, wheelchair user or pedestrian starts to cross, they may get run over. So you don't really want to tell people to cross. You don't want to beckon them to, to cross, yeah? Let them make their own decisions. So you slow down and stop. Let them check, you know, both ways, left, right. And once it's safe, for them, they should be able to go. So as long as you're stopping and waiting for them, we're all good. Don't tell them to cross. Yeah. Uh, it's a safety thing, obviously. Does that make sense, guys? Does it make sense? So, yeah, be prepared to stop is the correct answer on this one. All right, guys. So if you're actually finding this live uh, helpful, so, yep, hit that follow button or the subscribe button. Like this live, like this video as well. Make it leave the comment as well. Uh, if anyone, if you want any of the questions being made, uh, any questions, any other videos, then let me know as well. Yeah. So if you're finding this useful and yeah, just click a, a give us a like and, and a follow, follow and subscribe. Really appreciate that. OK, let's click on the next question. So it's going to be, let me just double check, prepare to stop. Yeah. Question number nine. You're following two cyclists as they approach a roundabout in the left hand lane. Where would you expect the cyclist to go? OK, sometimes questions can be a little bit confusing. So if you read the question again, you're following two cyclists as they approach a roundabout in the left hand lane. So you know the cyclist in the left hand lane, we're approaching a roundabout. Where would you expect the cyclist to go? Any direction, right, straight ahead or left? 
remember they're cyclists they're cyclists okay and hopefully they're actually sticking their arm out to telling people that they're going to go one direction or another but they're in the left hand side of the lane for a reason but it's safer for them okay now a lot of you saying a on this one yep any direction okay we can't assume that they're going to go right or straight ahead or left because they haven't told us so yeah for them to be approaching them in the left hand lane is the safest option yeah makes sense so any direction would be the correct answer here Good stuff, guys. Lots of good answers coming through here. Um, let's get these lights going as well. So double tap your screen. Let's get the lights going. Uh, let's get more people in the room and um, engaging in this uh, learning. Okay, we're going to click on any direction and click next. Question number 10 is you're approaching a zebra crossing. We've just had this question, haven't we? What should you do if pedestrians are waiting to cross? Ah, but that's different, actually. Now, it's a very similar question to what we've had. It just, on the previous question, it was wheelchair user. Okay, now it says if pedestrians are waiting to cross. Okay, what do you reckon, guys? <laughs> what do you reckon? Oh, okay, let's look at the answers. Use your headlights to indicate they can cross. Give way to older and infirm people only. Wave at them to cross the road. Remember what I just said about waving people. Don't do it. Slow down and prepare to stop. This was really easy. Zach is saying slow down and wait. Uh, Alien is saying stop. Uh, Floppy is saying A. Nope. No, don't do that. Daisy is saying D. Uh, Nana is saying D. Kabi is saying D. Uh, Sheriff is just apologised. Not sure why. Uh, sorry, D. Right, that's all right, Sheriff. Got it. Jack is saying D. Yep, D was the answer, wasn't it? Yeah. Slow down and prepare, prepare to stop. Now, it's the same thing whether it's a pedestrian or that wheelchair user. It's the same thing. Yeah, we, we guide them as pedestrians. That's it. We just uh, slow down and prepare to stop and let them cross. Don't wave them across. Don't flash them to cross or whatever else. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So D is the correct answer. So very similar question to what we've just seen. However, several different answers to choose from, wasn't it? Yeah. Kind of makes sense now you think about it. Yeah. Uh, Zach saying, yeah, same as the last question, just worded differently. Yeah, totally, totally. But with some different answers as well there, Zach. Right, okay, guys, let's click on to the next one. Question number 11. What could you do to reduce the volume of traffic on the roads? Walk or cycle on short journeys, driving a bus lane, travel by car at all times, or use a car with a smaller engine, A, B, C, or D. What could you do to reduce the volume of traffic on the roads? Now, this one actually makes sense. Yeah, if you only got a short journey to do, you know, and it's walking distance when it's especially if it's really nice weather, you are going to do what most of you are saying is A. Yeah, A seems to be your most um, common answer. So 18 of you said A. I totally agree with that. Daisy says, I don't know. If you don't know that, guys, that's absolutely fine. Just put IDK on the screen. Um, I don't know, and that's fine. I can't explain something for you if, if need be. That's all good. Yeah, A is the correct answer. Yeah, if you've got a short journey, you know, and just, you know, stop being more cars on the road, yeah, walk or cycle. Simple as that, okay? Driving a bus lane? No. You're still adding to the volume of traffic. Travel by car at all times? We're still adding to the volume of traffic. Use a car with a smaller engine? You're still adding to the volume of traffic, yeah? So the only one that makes sense here would be walk or cycle. Easy as that. Yeah, does it make sense, guys? Excellent. Good. Let's click on to question number 12. What does this traffic sign mean? Does it mean no overtaking allowed? Give priority to oncoming traffic, two-way traffic, or one-way traffic only? So easy way. I know a lot of people get really confused with road signs. So first of all, look at the shape and look at the color and then the content of it. Okay, so we know the shape is round, obviously. Uh, the color is a red border. So what does that mean? It's telling you um, something to do. It's an order sign, isn't it? Yeah, it's an order sign. Um, and then you look at the content. The content is quite clear. Um, let's have a look. A lot of you saying, oh, actually, quite a few are saying C, two-way traffic. Ah, okay. All right. That's not quite correct. Just saying B, give priority to oncoming vehicles. Um, lots of Bs coming. Ida saying B, uh, Marie saying B, Emmy saying B, Olivia saying B. Mm, yeah, most of you are actually saying B. Okay. No overtaking allowed? No. If it's no overtaking, there'll be a, a picture of a black car and a red car. That's no overtaking, okay? Give priority to oncoming traffic? That kind of makes sense. Two-way traffic? No, because the arrows are actually different colour and different sizes, yeah? One-way traffic only? This is not a one-way street sign. Yeah, does it make sense? So, 
it is give priority to oncoming traffic. So that's what this sign actually is. You've got the small arrow going up this way, which means the bigger arrow or the black arrow here coming the opposite direction. Oh, I forgot I could do that. It has got the priority because the arrow is bigger. So this is here telling you oncoming vehicle has priority. You've got to stop and wait for them. Yeah, does it make sense? So B is the correct answer, guys. Does that make sense? Hopefully, if, that, oh, if it's helping you, click that follow button. And if you're on YouTube, click the subscribe button right now. Well done, guys. Well done. Okay. Did I click the correct one? Yes, I did. Just had to double check. I don't want to get the wrong answer. Okay, question 13 is you're behind of this cyclist. When the traffic lights change, what should you do? You're behind this cyclist. When the traffic lights change, what should you do? Should you allow the cyclist time and room? Try to move off before the cyclist. Turn right, but give the cyclist room. Or tap your horn and drive through first. Safety, guys. What is the safest option? Always have cyclists in consideration as well. They are, at the end of the day, they are road users as well. Now, you see the way this, this, this bloke is positioned? He's not really far over to the left-hand side. So he's quite a little bit more into the, the middle, but he's not to the right-hand side here. So I would assume he's not turning right into this road here. He's going to go straight on. The cyclist could move over to the left a little bit more. They're safely in their cycle box, so that's absolutely fine. I'm going to assume they're going to go straight ahead. Now, that doesn't leave us a lot of room. So the safest option will be... Like you're all saying, A, most of you saying A on this one is allow the cyclist time and room to move away. Easy. Let's look at the other options. Try to move up before the cyclist. That could be dangerous with what I've just explained. Turn right, but give the cyclist room. What if we don't want to turn around? What if we want to go straight ahead? I mean, if you were turning right, fair enough. Tap your horn and drive through first. That could be dangerous. That could startle the, uh, the cyclist. So it's not a safe option. So, yep, allow the cyclist room to go before you do. Once it's safe, you can hopefully overtake them a little bit later on. Yeah. OK, guys, most of you saying A, so yeah, I'm happy with that. Question 14. Where would you expect to see these markers? Is it on a motorway sign, on a railway bridge, on a diversion sign or on a heavy goods vehicle? A, B, C on this or D on this one, guys. A, B, C or D. Now, I see lots of people saying D on a heavy goods vehicle. If you're never sure. On this app, the good thing you can do is click that hint button there. Yeah, click the hint button and then you really start to um, understand a little bit more. Now, most of you are saying D. We're going to go for D, but let's look at the hint anyway. These markers must be fitted to vehicles over 13 metres long. Heavy goods vehicles and rubbish skips placed in the road. Uh, they're reflective to make them easy to see in the dark. Easy. There you go. So you guys got the answer right. Yep, on heavy goods vehicles. You do see something similar on railway bridge to kind of warn you that there's a bridge there. I can't remember what colour there are on a bridge though, okay? Uh, Nisha said there's another one, but uh, it's similar, but it's black and white. I think they're the ones on the bridges actually. <laughs> okay, so yeah, heavy goods vehicles, we see these yellow and red uh, markers. Ah, right, here we go. Um... Which sign shows you're entering a one-way system? Right. This I'm glad this has come up actually because it goes back to a couple of couple of answers, questions ago, doesn't it? Yeah. Which sign shows that you're entering a one-way system? A, B, C, or D? I can see pretty much every single one of you saying C. Every single one of you saying C. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. So we know that uh, A. Um, it means you've got the priority. Yeah. This remember we said the big arrow. The small arrow, they've got to wait for you. Uh, B is they've got the priority. We've just looked at that one a couple of questions ago. The, the uh, oncoming arrow is bigger, so they've got the priority. This one, no U-turn. So we know it's, you know, it, that's not telling us it's a one-way street. This one's really easy. One-way street, and that's just this one. Simple, simple, simple. Yeah, pretty much every single one of you online right now on this live is saying C. Perfect. Well done, guys. Well done. Okay. Question 16 is, what must you check before you drive someone else's vehicle? Uh, should you check that the insurance documents are in the vehicle, that the vehicle is insured for you to use to drive, that you own, sorry, yeah, your own vehicle has insurance cover, or that the vehicle only has third-party insurance cover? A, B, C, or D? Uh, pretty much a lot of you saying B, a couple of you saying A, what's A, that insurance documents are in the vehicle. Uh, most of you saying B. We are going to go with B. Golden Boy is saying B. Daniel is saying B. Nisha is saying B. Prab is saying B. Aileen is saying B as well. 
T is saying D. The vehicle has uh, owner has third party insurance. No. So basically, if you're going to drive somebody else's vehicle, you've got to make sure that that vehicle is insured for you to drive. OK, you might not have your own insurance, but for you to drive somebody else's car, you need to be entitled to drive that car, whether that car has got any driver policy, in which case you do have, or if it's named policy, then you must be that named person. OK, the vehicle has been has to be insured for you to drive. OK, um, so yes. OK, good. Right. So most of you said um, B anyway. So we are going to go with B. Question number 17 is when must you contact the DVNA or the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Agency? That's a bit of a tongue twister. Is it when your vehicle's insurance is due, when you get a parking ticket, when you change your vehicle or when you use your vehicle for work? A, B, C or D on this one. Hot Peasy says C. Uh, Durex says C, user 7993 says C, a lot of you saying C, Sabine is saying C, Louise is saying C, Razan is saying C, Nisha, Hannah, yeah, Daisy, oh, Daisy's saying I don't know, all right, if you don't know, brilliant, I'm glad you said that, actually, so, yeah, if you're going to, um, you know, if you're going to change your vehicle, if you sold your car, you're going to tell the DVLA, yeah, to tell them that you've sold it onto somebody else, so that car can be registered to somebody else. They can insure it, they can, whatever else, yeah? Um, let's look at the other options. When your vehicle's insurance is due, no, you don't need to contact the DVLA. You, ins you contact your insurance company for that, yeah? When you get a parking ticket, again, you don't need to contact the DVLA. You actually contact your normal council that's issued that parking ticket. You either pay or, you know, you um, appeal against it, yeah? Uh, let's look at D. When you use your vehicle for work, again, that's an insurance reason. Yeah, that's an insurance thing on that one, okay? So you would actually contact insurance if you're going to use your vehicle for work. Uh, you need to tell them that you're going to use it for work so they can insure you for, you know, more more use rather than just uh, what's called social domestic pleasure and commuting for work and back or whatever else. So when you change your car or buy a new car, sell your car, yep, you will actually contact the DVLA. Yep, I think most of you said C anyway. A few were saying, I don't know, but that's all right. I'll explain it. Not an issue. Good stuff, guys. Right. Question number 18 is, you're driving behind a heavy goods vehicle. What should you do if it signals left, but steers to the right? Remember, it's a, it's a heavy goods vehicle, so it's probably a really long vehicle as well, okay? Slow down and let the vehicle turn. Drive on, keep into the left. Overtake on the right of it. Or hold your speed and sound your horn. A, B, C, or D. Now, I can see most of you on the screen are saying A. Over 20, 21 of you actually saying, oh, 23, 24... 25 people have you said A, slow down and let the vehicle turn. It's the safest option, guys, isn't it? Yeah. Raza saying A, Daniel saying A, Chloe, Raza, uh, Aladdin, uh, June is saying A as well, Golden Boy saying A. Yep, pretty much every single one of you saying A. Well done, guys. Uh, one plus says D, joking. Yeah. Uh, no, you don't want to do that. Okay. So, you're driving behind a heavy goods vehicle. Remember, like I said, it could be a really long vehicle. If it's a long vehicle, they need that really long turn. They need that turning angle, yeah? Hence why they've moved right, although they're signaling left. So they don't, they don't want to drive over pavements and curbs or whatever else. So they need a really wide turn. Hence why they will actually signal left, but they'll move over to the right first, then they'll go around and turn, yeah? So A would be the correct answer. Let's look at the other options. Drive on, keep it to the left. Nope you're going to have a crash because that car's going to, that vehicle's going to turn. That heavy goods is going to turn, yeah? They might not see you in their left-hand side. Overtake on the right of it. There's no space. It's not a danger. It's not a safe thing to do. That's dangerous as well. Hold your speed and sound your horn. Why? What's that going to achieve? It doesn't make sense. Let them turn, yeah? So, yeah, slow down and let the vehicle turn. It's the safest option. Safest option, guys. Question number 19 is, where's the safest place to park your vehicle at night? Is it on a busy road, on a red route, sorry, near a red route, in a quiet car park or in a garage? Where is the safest place to park your vehicle at night? This one kind of makes sense, obviously, when you think about it. Now, I can see a lot of you saying D. There's a few Cs coming through. Daisy saying B, near a red route. Red route basically means you can't park there. Yeah, somebody said, just pass my driving test. Well done. Yeah, red route, you can't park on red routes. Um, so that's not always going to be an option, is it? Okay, on a busy road, not going to be safe. Remember, it's where's the safest place to park? In a quiet car park, yeah, could be safe enough, but again, it's open to maybe theft or damage or whatever else. If you park in your own garage, it's locked away. That's the safest option, isn't it? Days are meant C. No, it's D. 
Uh, Stephanie says, what is a red route? A red route is, you know, have you seen the double yellow lines on the side of the curb? Yeah, double yellow lines means no parking on them. Yeah. So you'll see instead of double yellow lines, you'll see double red lines. That means you cannot stop or park there. If it is, your car is going to be towed away. Normally in city centres, you see them around hospitals quite a lot. Um, you see a lot of red routes in, in London, big cities. We've got loads of red routes in Leicester as well, actually. So, yeah. Um, so there we go. So, yeah, D is the correct answer on this one. OK, let's click on to the last question, guys. What information should be shown in a triangular road sign? Think, what does this mean, the triangular shape? Does it mean minimum speed? Hang on. What information should be shown in a triangular road sign? Minimum speed? Ah, yeah. Road narrows ahead only or keep left. So this goes back to looking at um, shapes, colour and, you know, the content. So a lot of you saying ahead only. Well, my pencil stopped. Oh, there you go. Just switch it back on. Ahead only. A lot of you saying ahead only. Minimum speed. Uh, minimum speed will be in a circle, won't it? Yeah. So we've got to come back to what, you know, each, if you kind of like look at, think this minimum speed, that'll be in a circle. So we know it's not that one. Road narrows. Mm, ahead only. Mm hmm. Or keep left. Which one do you think it's going to be? Now, I'm not going to give you the answer here. So I think a lot of you saying B. I think a lot of you saying B, road narrows. There's a few Bs and a few Cs coming through. <laughs> I can't tell which is the most one. Should we look at the hint? Let's look at the hint. Did it work? Right. Warning signs are there to make you aware of potential hazards on the road ahead. Take note of the signs so you're prepared and you can take whatever action is necessary. Doesn't really tell you there, yeah? It's a, we know this is a warning sign. Yeah, it's a hazard warning sign, isn't it, yeah? Uh, so a triangle is a hazard warning sign. So, um... Road narrows. That could be a warning, couldn't it? A head only? Not really a warning as such. So, yeah, I think we'll go with B. Shall we go with B on this one? <laughs> All right, let's go for B. There's a few, quite a few C's coming through, actually. Row is saying it's B. Right, we're going to click finish, guys. It's going to give us a score. So what score do you think we've got? I'm going to flag this, actually. So that if I click finish, do I want to uh, review it? Right, what score do you think we've got there? Do you think we've got 20 out of 20 or did we get 19? 18, 17, 16. How many do we get uh, correct out of the 20 questions? What do you think we got? What do you think? If you're playing along at home as well, um, what scores did you get? So something that you can actually do is, you know, yeah, I should have said this right at the start, is make your own score chart so you know what you got wrong, what you got right. It'll make it kind of, you'll understand a lot more. So if I click no, yeah, there it is. We've scored 20 out of 20. So we've got every single question correct. So the last one was, it was um, bend ahead or whatever. And that's a warning sign. Remember, the triangle has a warning sign. It's warning you that this is happening, yeah? Right, so guys, that's it easy. There we go. We've got 20 out of 20. Simple as that. And that is how you've got to break the question down. Read the question carefully. Read the answers carefully. And then also break the questions, uh, the answers down as well. So you can get rid of the two answers that kind of like, you know, are the silly ones. Get rid of them. And then you're left with two poss possible answers. One of them will make common sense. And that's all you need to do. Yeah. All right, guys. Just wait along on TikTok. Um, over on uh, YouTube. Thanks for watching, guys. If you found this content, um, this video really helpful, hit the subscribe button. Uh, you know, like this video as well, leave a comment down and also watch the other live videos I've done on theory tests as well. Again, I've broken down lots of other questions and help you to understand how you need to actually pass your theory test first time. So well done. Thank you very much for watching.